Yes. So uh, thanks everyone. Thanks for organizing and like accepting uh, me to give a talk. I'm Vladimir Hanesian, and I'll be talking about uh, enhancing spin-spin correlators in mixed field Ising due to stochastic resetting. So the thing is, I mean, I, I got curious in the stochastic resetting processes motivated with my collaborators, uh, Petreska and Sandev, and I just start, started kind of like learning about this, and those are some of the results that we got along the way. Nobody. <laughs> I, right now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if, uh, go forward. I mean, <laughs> look, look, look. <laughs> it's not uh, It's it's okay. I'll I'll just. Yes, try with yeah, I'll just try from okay. here and should be fine, I guess. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I'll be resetting it all the time to the beginning. <laughs> okay, so uh, I'll give kind of like a quick overview on uh, classical and then also quantum resetting. Then I'll introduce the model of mixed field ising. Then I'll also introduce the reset protocol there. And I'll be talking about two different uh, uh, resetting functions. One of them is Poisson resetting, and the other one is a power law, uh, power law resetting function. Well, so I mean, by now I guess everyone is familiar with what's the idea of stochastic, stochastic resetting in classical systems was uh, kind of like introduced uh, in the two, uh, 2011, and the idea is you have some diffusive process, and beside the diffusive kind of like known process, you add uh, uh, you add some uh, uh, some probability, uh, constant probability for the particle to return to its initial condition at every uh, so, so this is like a constant uh, probability at every uh, uh, position in space and time, and this is the delta function that is further resetting to the initial state. And this was explained in the in the first day how it works in classical systems. It gives a rise to a non-equilibrium state, steady state, and also, for example, if you uh, if you kind of like monitor the fine uh, the fine uh, the, the mean squared displacement it's finite with resetting, which is not the case. If you just have a diffusive process, then it diverges. Uh, yeah, I'm, well, it's obvious that I haven't given like a talk in a long time in front of people. So for, quant for quantum systems, it's kind of like a similar idea. It's quite interesting that it was introduced by, by the same author of the, of the classical uh, resetting in 2018. So now what we have is some uh, some qu some quantum system, the dynamic that's uh, that's uh, evolving with uh, some Hamiltonian h, and you have some uh, initial state psi zero, and then you evolve the system unitarily, of course, but then at at every time point you give it uh, you give it a constant probability r for the system to 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 go back to its initial uh, to its initial state. So you have something like uh, unitary evolution, and then uh, you can, I mean, uh, a reset can happen to the initial state. And now I won't go into too many details, but the, what really matters here in this reset is basically like how much time has passed uh, since the last reset all the way until TM, which is a measuring time here, like the time where we're interested about the system. And this can be kind of like cast in a renewal equation uh, concept where you, you kind of like get the, the expression for the density matrix and also for the expectation value of an operator in this form. So like kind of to understand uh, quickly what's this, this is kind of like a probability, it's, it's a sum of probabilities. So this is the probability that the system will not be reset at all the way until the measurement time, whereas the, the second part is you're integrating over the, 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 the resetting to happen it, at each, uh, tau here with a certain probability. So like if you have a constant probability r here, that gives a rise to a Poissonian uh, resetting function. And then I'll introduce later another PDF, which will bring some interesting, uh, interesting properties in the system. Okay, so here, similar to a classical system, what happens is that you're, uh, you're getting a stationary state for the density matrix. Uh, this was also uh, kind of like introduced in the uh, 2080 paper of quantum resetting. And uh, the, the interesting thing is here that like, uh, you know that if you let the system evolve unitarily at the very late times, like if you, if you take the measurement time at infinity, you get the diagonal basis. However, here, once we have resetting in the system, uh, we, we, we kind of like get uh, off diagonal terms that lead 
I mean, it give rise to some kind of like non-trivial correlations in the system, and it also would be manifested into the expectation values of the operators, which is something I'll be talking about. Now, the model that we are studying, uh, though this was kind of like very optimistic, uh, uh, it's it's uh, the mixed field uh, Ising, where you have uh, you have like a chain of spins, and you have coupling between neighboring spins in the ZZs. And then also you have like a, some type of field, let's say like magnetic field in the x direction and also in the z direction. Here those capital letters are basically same as the Pauli matrices uh, x and, and, and z, but it's just a kind of a condensed version. And like depending on the parameters, there are different, there are different uh, models. So you can have like the non-interacting, uh, non which is kind of like a trivially solvable. And then you have the interacting model, which has a chaotic regime and also transfer sizing model where the hz is zero. So, I mean, we plan kind of like to, to, to talk about everything, but there won't be time for, for that. So I'll, I'll focus mostly on the non-interacting system, which even though it's non-interacting, it has some interesting properties, thanks to a recent paper that was by Matteo and uh, Perfetto. Okay, so now the reset uh, protocol is the, the simplest one that you can have. Like, as I said, I'm learning about this, so it's really just, we just take the simplest one, where we start with the state that, that it's all up, and then it's also the reset state. So we reset the system to an all up state. And then we let it, uh, we let it evolve. I mean, how, how you can kind of like see this resetting protocol physically is like you have some pulses, the stochastic pulses of very high magnetic field. So for example, if you turn them on, regardless of, like the, the, regardless of the spin configuration, it will tend to kind of like uh, flip all of the spin, spins up. And they're also, I mean, also like the, the resetting is kind of like some special type of measurements where with probability one, you kind of like measure the system into the, into the initial state. And then for some other reset protocols, you can check, for example, like one of Perfetto's papers. <laughs> yes, we said that. Okay, so I said like I'll talk about the non-interacting uh, non-interacting systems here. The the magnetic field. This is some constant that will appear, but just so you know that it's kind of the combination of the magnetic fields. And those are the observables that we will be interested in. So it's the one point uh, function of x and z, and also like the two point function of x uh, and z. Because we don't have interacting system, they don't. So this is the time evolution. They don't depend on the position. So even so, that's why no i or j appears here. Uh, Sorry, I have a conceptual question. What does the meaning of a two-point correlation function if the spins are independent? Uh, wait for a second. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes. So, so, so this is the whole idea. So, for example, you can compute all of those things, and for example, you compute the uh, the, the full two-point uh, functions, and you can analytically compute compute those things as a functions of the magnetic fields and also of the resetting rate. So, this is already in the stationary state. And then here we have the xx correlators, here we have the zz correlators. And we see that kind of like some interesting thing happens that depend on the resetting rate. I mean, it's kind of like not difficult to see that. Like here, initially the state when, when magnetic field x is kind of like zero, the spins are really just all up and the reset rate, it also brings them to all up so nothing happens. But here you get kind of like an interplay of scales because you have this reset rate, which is kind of like a very strong magnetic field along the z direction, but then also you have this magnetic field along the x direction, which is the transfer one, and that's why you're getting those kind of like bumps. But this is the full one. This is the full one, and now uh, we didn't even pay attention because we thought like, I mean, it's not interacting system, so like why considering the connected part because there won't be a connected correlator. And then there was like Mateos and Perfetto's paper uh, and uh, some of their other collaborators, and basically a very recent paper, it's a very interesting one. So they, they realized basically that if you com compute the connected part in the stationary state, there is kind of like an emergence of, uh, of, correlation, of, of connected correlators. So they were studying this part, they were studying the, uh, the ZZ correlators, and they're also kind of like interesting, but then they saturate, and that's because like there you don't see the interplay between the X, uh, the X. And then we, because before we were thinking about the, the XX correlators in an interacting system, we thought, okay, let's see what happens here. Perfect. And then what you can realize is that uh, basically here some maximum of cor uh, correlations happen and they, uh, they depend on the, on the reset rate. 
So we thought, okay, let, let, let's see like, how is the dependence of this maximum. I mean, the maximum of the fields where this uh, maximum happens, and also like the maximum of the correlators as functions of the reset rate R. And then an interesting thing, I mean, it's just a derivative to zero, and it's interesting that it's kind of like uh, you get some optimal uh, reset rate at which this, uh, uh, at which the, max, the, the, the field for maximal correlations uh, happens. But also even more interesting, you get kind of like, uh, uh, like maximal correlations at a given reset rate here. So this is some rho star. Okay, so like th this is kind of like the, the dependence of the maximum of the peak on the reset rate. And you see that there is kind of like enhancement of those correlators at some reset rate. Good, so here is kind of like in, in, in an interacting system, but I won't present this. It's on the right side and you see kind of like, you get like much richer structure when you turn on interaction because there is another energy scales that appears and that gives kind of like rise to some interesting things, but that will be for some other conference, I guess. And now, uh, as I said, uh, because this is kind of like a non-Markovian uh, non processes conference, we'll be talking about some, uh, about another, uh, uh, an out, uh, another probability for the reset to happen, and that's, a, uh, and that's a power law. And in order to analyze that, we need to use kind of like, uh, I mean, we, we're using methods from, from the review paper by Majumdar of 2020, and that we can extend it to, uh, to, uh, to operators, and this is again like thanks to Perfetto, which pointed it out to me. And the idea is here that this P star is basically the survival probability. The survival probability means that the, 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 uh, the state won't be resetted uh, all the way until time t. And now for this to, 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 to get like a stationary state, the only requirement is for this integral to, to not diverge. And then also you, you, you're getting kind of like expectation value of, of those operators. And now why we are interested in this is because like in classical systems, there, there were some research studies of, those, of, of, of the power law uh, function, which is this one, and this is the survival probability. And even more recent study kind of, uh, of one of my collaborators, uh, Sandev, so they explore kind of like what's the dependence of, of the diffusive classical uh, process on this parameter gamma. And they saw some, diff some different interesting regimes when you monitor the mean square displacement. So basically if gamma is smaller than zero, then you get kind of like some diffusive process and that, that diverges. But then for example, if you have other extreme gamma larger than two, then, uh, then you get like a stationary state. And now the idea was like just to see uh, how this manifests in quantum systems. Uh, this is the computation that we can do for quantum systems and then we realize basically that due to a divergence of this integral for gamma smaller than zero also in quantum uh, system, uh, sorry, uh, here it's one. So it's gamma smaller than one or zero, then, uh, then we, uh, we have, uh, like it's, it's not defined, the, the stationary state is not defined. And, uh, and then we can do the whole, the, the whole thing for the correlators for example, with this power law, it's, it's expressed uh, by the Trizioni uh, confluent hypergeometric function, and then we can again like study what are what are the maximum correlations as a function of the reset rate, but now now also of this gamma. And here we see, and, and this com compared to the exponential uh, exponential behavior. And then the interesting thing is we see, for example, if you go to, like, to larger resetting rates, for example, the exponential, the exponential one, you have kind of like this maximum decreases. It's kind of like logical because if you reset the system with a higher rate, that means that it will be aligned more and more in the Z direction. So you lose the correlators in, in the XX uh, uh, operators. But here for the power law, it seems it kind of like either go up or it saturates or, and we are still not sure what happens, you know. Uh, even at higher things, and that's something to be checked. Well, I maybe went a bit too fast, but thanks a lot, and you've seen this like a couple of times. But <laughs> anyways, thanks for attention. Thank you very much for the talk. Are there questions here? Let's see if, uh, if uh, no, there is nothing. Oh. Sorry. No, no, you, you, need, you need to have the mic. Uh, so I have one curiosity about the last thing that you presented. Is it possible to cure up the, the regime gamma smaller than one to introduce some sort of cuts renormalization in the resetting protocol such that uh, this regime is well defined, the steady state is well defined? Because when I think about the easy model, for instance, if okay. I have long range interactions, yes. 
if I have gamma smaller than one, then I put a cut normalization, and then the energy becomes gamma fixed. larger than than one. Smaller than one. Smaller than smaller one. than one. You mean in the part? Yes. In in your case, is it possible at all, or well, it's just curiosity? Huh? I I really don't know. Like I I really can't say. Because this is something that you try. You put yeah, that I mean, in normalization. I, I try, because you check. this is this is something that's qu quite fresh, right? I mean, it's like maybe a week. Yesterday ago. night, you know, I did oh, it. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, like some <laughs> of the results were like two days ago after I talked with Perfetto and Manjunda. I see. So, okay. <laughs> so add the normalization. It's, that's why it's, check, that's why it's very useful to have this like kind of like in-person conference, and I really appreciate yeah. that. I don't know, but I mean, okay. So then, given also we are running way too late, I think let's thank you. We thank you again. Thanks again for the talk. And we, and we go towards the last. Uh, uh, yeah. is it, what is this? Here for ah, okay. Okay. So we have, uh, I don't know, bread. I don't know.